Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel on a damp and nasty boxing day for a probably not too quick inbox review of Crimble Prezzy from my wonderful girlfriend Mary Trumpeters 135th T72A mod 1983 um, T72 being the Soviet second generation main battle tank came into service in about 1970 I think came from the one, Object 172 and several similarities to a T64 and eventually got tuned up as it were and developed all the way and pretty much shares a lot in common with the T90 which is the one that's still in service so it's a fairly sizable box there's a fair amount in it so let's get started before we're here for about an hour the usual trumpeter box I say there's a fair bit I've not actually opened it yet oh dear and you can tell some of these boxes really don't like coming open not the first time anyway it doesn't help I'm trying to do this and not smack the camera around as well perhaps I should get a more stable camera mount that might be an idea Ooh, come on off you get there we go so yes big box full of plastic usual trumpeter adverts in the top what else we got on there? MiG-29, HMS Rodney, you plonker. Come on, how many people must have called out the HMS plonker in its time? Well, maybe not in its time, but in since. So let's, go, let's go with that, because I'm not overly familiar with when British battleships came into and left service. So we'll start with the lower hull, as is usual, Trumpy, everything bagged fairly separately. Check there's nothing left in the bag. We have poly caps for the road wheels, as is usual. We have the braided copper tow cable, the vinyl hose and the copper wire to go in the vinyl hose for the fuel lines. And for some reason they've decided to protect the tub. Ah, sharp corners. Why is it Sony Trumpeter and Hobby Boss actually bother to do that to protect their parts with foam? I don't know. Answers in the comments. So, what do we have? Well, sits flat. Draws his raised details on the bottom. I'm going to zoom us in a little bit so we can get a more of a close-up view. Maybe not that much. How about there? Uh, that'll do. As is typical with a modern trumpeter kit and the T series of tanks. Beautifully moulded. Nice slight texture detail. Oh, can you hear those panel lines and rivets? Yeah, let's listen to some rivets. There we go. Oh, throw it in the box. Now, you've got to make sure you can hear the detail. I mean, you don't need to see it, but you do have to hear it, obviously. Um, the upper hull, which does share quite a bit in common with the old t or upper hull, upper turret uh, half, sorry. A little clamshell and gonna share a lot in common with the old, older versions of the T90. Again some very nice raised detail, the little dimples for all the IR sensors that will be photo etch. Eject pin marks on the inside but you know that's what it, the insides are there for. No flash uh, is that for? No, that's detail. <laughs> yep. 
all looking good to me so far anyway. The front upper hull. Engine deck will be separate because there's several, several different versions of a T72. And I think the engine deck is where a lot of the differences come. Uh, again we see similar crisp levels of detail. Super fine delicate around the turret ring. I believe that is there to stop it becoming a shot trap. And stop the shells getting stuck underneath. Yep, T72A printed on the inside. Now I'm not going to bother trying to fit bits together because you know I know they're going to fit. And we'll start with the next sprue, which is actually side skirts and another front upper hull, which is probably for a standard T72, but it doesn't say on the underside. Again, no flash. No obvious misbolds that I can see. So it's got moulded nice and wavy to represent the fact that they're rubber rather than steel. Um, they weren't there for any armouring reason. They were there purely to stop dust coming up off the road wheels and ending up going in the air filter and clogging that up. So literally by bolting those side skirts on they really increase the service time massively on the air filters and the distinctive pike nose uh, water blocker. <coughs> yeah I've forgotten the correct term. Bit that goes in front of the driver's hatch to stop him getting drowned whenever he goes through a puddle. Um, being the V-shape it does put you in mind of the old IS3 with the pike nose on it. Which is very cool. Uh, I should mention this is a 1200 part kit. So less than most of the T90s but more than the previous kits or the previous iterations of Soviet main battle tank. The earlier T72s or the T54s, T55s, T62s. All that cool stuff. So now we're onto a sprue of Greeblies and general smaller parts. Uh, mainly we have hatches, front plates, dozer blade, and just general small parts, exhaust, yeah, storage box lids. I could probably identify a lot of them, but we'd be here for hours. Main thing. All looks good and crisp. There's no obvious sink marks or short shots, airfix. Um, nice sprue gates in sensible places. Yeah, a couple of the EPMs on the under, obviously on the underside, but you're not going to see them. They are a little bit raised, but you know, quick run over with a sander or chisel will get rid of those instantly. But yeah. All in all, very nice sprue. Oh, and my phone's going off. Sod it. <laughs> and yes, I have just realised I'm doing that thing where I put all the sprues in the lid of the box. And then when I go to show the box later, yeah. Right. Whoever that was, they can ring back. Uh, probably not that important. <laughs> Obviously unless it's Mary then it's highly important but she'll understand. Again with more of the foam wrap around the sprue to protect the delicate parts. Which I'm guessing they're probably going to be fuel lines. I'm going to have to keep an eye on the time because we've got quite a bit to go. Yeah, fuel lines. So as I was saying we have the fuel line, the runner that goes across the back for the opening the hatches etc. Engine deck, sprockets, 
MG, various other small parts. Um, suspension arms, you know, that kind of stuff. All looking good to me, nice and crisp, good detail. Again, we've got the thing with the uh, EPMs on the underside, but again, simple to sort out. When they're like that and in a non-visible position, you can just chop them out quick. You don't have to, you know, it's not like it's on the inside of a fuselage or something where you've got to do it neat and tidy and make sure it's all completely invisible. Yeah, unless of course it's somewhere that isn't visible. In which case, let's be honest, We've all done the uh, fix an EPM only to find out we didn't need to fix it because it's invisible once the thing's built. So we have fenders, lower turret, or turret base, and probably more, more similar parts for... Uh, open it properly might help you know, being a mod as it were not there will be the original t72 kit which some of these bits will be for and then being the t72a 83 some of the bits will be different so you get extra sprues again everything looking nice and crisp <clears throat> interesting use of the inside of the Turret base, amount extra parts. Don't lose them. Hopefully, <coughs> hopefully you stick them on before you need to do that. But you know, again, all lovely, lovely. And again, no EPM marks on the underside of parts, so that's not a problem because you're never going to see them. Aha, uh -huh. see this is where things get confusing, when you have multiple versions of a kit and you get all the original parts as well as the updated parts, so this is sprue K1, I'm guessing this is probably updated parts, because we have a different turret base, different V-nose, <laughs> different plates, Got the smoke launchers, hatches, lights, grab handles, random tiny little parts. And again, all good, crisp, well detailed. And now I'm not concerned with how this is going to fit together. I've built enough modern trumpeter armour. All the smoke launchers. Are it's only slightly slide moulded to get the dent in the end of the launchers, but that's good enough. It's going to be painted black anyway. So, yep, that's cool. And, oh, the Bang Bang Sprue. Here we go. And I've probably said this before in several reviews, but yes, two part plastic barrel. No need for a metal one. Don't go going, oh my god, no, it's rubbish, it's got a plastic barrel, it's in two pieces. Ah. It really doesn't take long to fix a seam, trust me. Probably takes a lot less time than trying to get all the extra bits stuck onto a metal barrel and get it to actually fit. So. <clears throat> As I was saying, we do have the two halves of the gun barrel, more various bits of add-on armour, parts of the hatch mechanisms, and more tiny delicate parts as well, which are all four. And again, all crisp, neat, and well done. As I can see, you're not going to get that barrel in turned aluminium because there's too much going on with it. You might get the barrel, but you would then have to probably have either resin bits or styrene bits stuck over the top of it, and you'd probably end up with even more seam lines and filler than you would if you just used the kit barrel and you won't get any extra detail. 
so saith Sharpie. Obviously, you know, if you want to go out and buy a metal barrel or metal tracks for some random weird reason, something that really doesn't need them. And anyway, we got the tops of the storage bins for the fenders, some of the more uh, some more suspension parts, idler wheel, or will they sprocket? Uh, sprocket mounts, more bits for the front dozer blade, and again, really all nicely detailed, looks good. And as I said before, I know it's all going to fit because I've built enough modern trumpeter Russian armor kits to know they fit together. Right, they may have lots of parts, but don't let that put you off. Because it's a lot easier to build a kit with a thousand odd parts that fit together properly. You know, you chop it off the sprue, you clean up the sprue gate, you stick it on. Job done. Rather than having to go through all the palaver of dry fitting and checking everything. and Then adjusting it and then dry fitting it and, you know. Anyway, so we have two identical sprues, road wheels, sprockets, idlers, no, uh, more no, b -b -b tow hooks, running gear, idler arms, return rollers, periscope covers, more of the smoke launchers, all the nunches as Trumpeter did call them once. I say he even got the brake discs. <laughs> I, I guess they're probably not actually the brake discs. It's going to take more than that to stop a tank, but it's kind of what they look like sat in the middle of the sprocket. So, yep. Yeah. And as I say, we've even got the detail on the reverse of the road wheels. And all looking very nice indeed, again. It's one of these where you kind of wish you could find something nasty, but you're not going to, because, you know, it's a good kit. There's not going to be anything to slag off about it. Apart from the fact that not enough people will build them. So, another... Another set of sprockets, <laughs> rear decks, ERA, I don't actually think this version has ERA on it, so you know, when we look at the instructions in a bit, we'll see, um, we're probably not going to be using every single part off of the sprues, but you know, spare bits are always good to have. There's mounting points for the fenders or fender hangers, more storage box lids, more suspension arms, and again, sensibly placed sprue gates that aren't massive. So, yeah, more oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, that's an upgrade. A very nice upgrade. Someone's been watching Bronco. Because what they've done is the ubiquitous Russian fuel barrels. So we have the mounts, top and bottom, or yep, yeah, one end of various small greebly bits, hooks, catches, idle mounts, front of fender stays mini uh, ammo crates. If we look at the barrels, slide moulded, yay, so no dealing with the two seams all the way down the length of the barrel. And we've got the fuel taps moulded on as well, which is even better. And again, yep, we've got some Eject pin marks on the underside of bits, but that's not a problem. Never is. 
anyone who goes through and sits there and fills every single ejector pin on a model kit needs a slap. Right now it's one of those things where if it's if you're building for specifically for a competition, then things like making sure you've not got seams all the way down the intakes or inside the exhaust or things like that. If it's something you're building for yourself to stick on a shelf. If you know anyone who's going to sit there, look at your model kit, and then break out a flashlight and shine it up the intakes to check you've done the intakes properly, you probably don't want to know them. Anyway, so we have more ERA on this sprue, more hatches. I'm seeing a lot of you know, repeat parts. This is L3, so I'm guessing we're probably going to be using some bits off of here. And maybe some of the air all right i might might just stick some on anyway just in case and yep. very similar to previous sprues we'll pull those to one side for now because i think everyone's familiar with them We have another more sprue goodness. So we have the uh, bulges on the side of the hull for where the turret ring runs because the turret is slightly wider than the hull. Another exhaust, more fender hangers, sprocket mounts, they just uh, suspension parts. And just generally more little greeblies, all really nicely detailed. Again, can't see any short shots, sink marks, nothing nasty or untoward there. Sprues, as I say, it's modern trumpeter, so the sprues aren't greasy, there's no release agent. Then no, the little exhaust tip, slide moulded. So you pop the main exhaust part on, pop that underneath, and you get the Four port exhaust slide molded, which is always cool. Next up, we have the bit that most people will probably swear at the tracks. Standard Trumpeter Indy Link tracks, very similar to the early T90s, I think, or are they? No, more similar to the T62. Again, no, only three sprue points where they're attached. Good detail. And the ejector pin pads are on the sprue, so there's no ejector pin marks on the individual links. All the same. Yep, they look, yep, uh, sprue in, sprue in, yep. So we got eight sprues of those, I think. Is it? Nope, seven. But you know that, that's, that's a fair amount of tracky bits. But, you know, don't worry about them, don't panic about them, don't go, oh, there's so many. It's not tricky, it's not difficult. You actually have the bits that, again, is something that you know, I only really see Trumpet to do. Other companies do it occasionally for little bits. Here we have the vinyl sprue, let's say. We have the uh, mantlet cover, tree trunk for the back, top mantlet cover, uh, shell, shell bag for the, it's not a 50 cal, is it for the dishka on the roof of these? Is it a dishka? Is it 12.7? I can't remember. Again, very nice. Pop them back in there. We have a couple of different mantlet covers, also in vinyl. I guess it's usually one is for gun pointing straight ahead, one is for gun angled up somewhat. Let's just take a little break and put some of these back where they should be. 
so that then when it comes to it I can actually get to the box lid chance now. There we go. Right, now let's get back to the small parts. We have clear parts which is just periscopes so you know no big deal. It's an armor kit you don't you really don't worry about the clear parts as long as they're there. <laughs> decals, trombler decals, not the greatest, not horrific. But it's a tank, so you've just got numbers and a couple of Russian badges on there. Nothing too spectacular. And you know, they'll, they'll be thin, they'll go down well. It's just whether the grease proof has left any marks on the decals, which it sometimes does. So we'll have a quick look. And it's not like I'm short of Russian decal markings, so... And again, the sealed inside a bag. No, yep, they all look good to me. Nicely in register. They're the only ones that are coloured and the numbers are white and they'll do the job. Oh, we actually have more clear parts. She is, again, is just Light lenses, more periscopes, and a couple of small viewing slots from guessing the roof mounted weapon and other bits. Now we have one bit that some people do dread. I don't find it a problem. You just take your time, stick it on. It's no can want that you get. The photo itch sprue, well the first one anyway. Um, I say nothing too small and fiddly on there. Not with some of these brackety bits are but you know not to worry. Nothing too complex to bend I don't think. It would just be those. They're the underfenders, perhaps, or maybe some kind of smoke launcher, something like that. Anyway, but again, just look at it and figure out. You figure out easily the order in which to bend them. It's not tricky. And we have the next bag of etch. Okay, we'll cut. Try to be clever. Still didn't work. There we go. Now we have two of the A frets, so I'll only get one out, which is the various engine deck grates and the fiddly dinky parts. All these little round parts are for the uh, thermal detectors or a part of the suite of protection I think is the way of putting it basically to confuse thermal guided weapons uh, these are the ones that just glue into the little dents that are on the turret etc easy enough chuck my flush with a nice sharp knife so you've got the plastic film both sides Peel one side off, they don't all go flying everywhere as soon as you chop them. It's a small dob of super glue in the hole, and job done. And I put all the screws back in the box and forgot to take the instructions out. Right. So, first thing we have. Paint and markings guide. Yeah, pretty much ignore the paint call outs. It's a Russian tank. So green, black, and a bit of silver, and maybe a bit of brown for the log. So 
So yeah, I mean nothing. It doesn't even call out any markings on there, so probably don't even need the decals at all anyway. So there we go. And the destructions. Which I'll zoom us out a little so we can see a bit more. And we'll just have a quick trundle through these because this video is getting rather long. Just so you can see sprue map. Nothing crossed out, but don't worry about it. And then yeah, basic standard, simple, clear, obvious assembly instructions, the normal way to start and build a tank. Lower hull, upper hull. Fiddly bits, upper hull on lower hull, fenders, fenders, side skirts, the tracks magically appear. There we go, how many does it say? 95 links per side, so not too bad. I mean, it may look complica complicated and a lot going on, but don't worry about it, it's not that bad. <laughs> so you've got the option of the two different PE parts for the dots, which is cool, so you can have different types. And they're spread around all over the model. Just finish the turret off. I say it's in sub-assemblies, so you end up with like bigger parts to just glue together and it works out. It works out really well in the end. And put the turret on the hull and sit back and admire your model. So there we go. Fairly long winded look at what isn't too complicated a model. It should go together rather nicely. And grab the box lid up for now. Just checking that the camera is still running and I'm not going to have to go back through this again at warp speed. So there we go. If you're tempted, I would say go for it. It looks an awesome kit and I can pretty much vouch that it's going to fit. The Trumpeter T72A Mod 1983 main battle tank. Hope you've enjoyed that quick, uh, not so quick rush through. But there's a lot to get through as you saw. Um, if you're not already subbed, sub to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, I'll get back to everyone. And thanks for watching, have fun, peace out, rock on, bye bye.